That is a very disturbing headline indeed for the Boston Red Sox. The, the surgery was announced as an internal bracing of the UCL in his right elbow. We could, in layman's terms, call it a modified Tommy John surgery with a shorter recovery timetable. That replays short, obviously, based on the current personnel, that's where you'd have to go uh, and then have Jaron Duran be the center fielder. But I think we would all look at this roster and say, this Ouch. is not one that's going to be able to compete with the New York Yankees or the Rays or the newly fortified Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, the Boston Red Sox and High and Bloom all of a sudden on the 11th of January, gentlemen, have a lot of work to do indeed. Oh, boy. So you know, we're going to have Pete Abraham on the show a little bit later on. Uh, Pete uh, has covered the Red Sox for a long time uh, with the Boston Globe, and these are questions for Pete for sure. I know that there's been some conversation coming out of New England, great in New England, about the team desiring to get better up the middle. That there's not much out there on the free agent market at this stage of the game. I'm not sure what kind of deal they think they could strike for a Nick Ahmed or somebody who's under contract elsewhere. This has really been a very interesting, and that's a diplomatic choice of words, interesting offseason for so the rest. JP, Sox. I got to ask you this before we let you go, too. With the timing of this and knowing they didn't sign Bogarts and they haven't done anything up the middle, this had to have caught the Red Sox by surprise. Am, am I right? Yes, uh, and obviously when the season ended, this was not something that was on the Red Sox radar. And, and to the point that you made earlier, Harold, um, it raises a great question of, of depending on when exactly the Red Sox find out this information and where Correa was in his process, would they have taken a five or a six year deal with Correa for Carlos a chance to play in a major East Coast market, which is what appealed to him about the Mets? Wouldn't Correa, with his longstanding ties to Alex Cora, have been a really good fit in That'd Boston? had the Red Sox known the full extent of the story situation. And even then, to go back to November, December, if they had known this information um, at that point in time, they could have taken an entirely different approach to Correa. It's an excellent question. And to me, it, it really illustrates that the Red Sox simply did not have full information on Story's health until probably the last several days or, or maybe the last couple of weeks at the very earliest. I, I, that is a hard one to, to believe. I Man, uh, we'll ask Pete Abraham more about this, but it's yeah. been, uh, I, I, again, diplomatic choice of words on my part. When I say interesting, I think a lot of Red Sox fans would use other words when describing Boston's offseason. Uh, but we'll get some more context from Pete later on. JP, good stuff. Thank you. Good job, JP. Man, that, I mean, I, I, he, he said it all. Like, how do the Red Sox on paper right now look compared to the rest of that division? Not, Not so good. good. And this is a team that finished in last place last year. Yeah, no, that's not a good roster. It's the Red Sox we're talking about. We're not talking about the Washington Generals, right? Yeah. Or, or you know, a perennial doormat team. This is a, I mean, this is a hallowed brand. The the crazy part, it looks like they didn't plan. That's what's the bad part. I, of it. I can't believe, and that. I can't believe that they just did. Well, the Trevor Story thing, I think, really did catch them by surprise. You had to have an understanding. They knew Bogarts was going to be a free agent. I think what happened along the way is the market exploded. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're watching guys get contracts like we've never seen before. I mean, we, I don't so, think anybody in Boston or anywhere else planned on the Padres and Phillies, maybe the Phillies or the, and the, maybe the Mets. But, like, there were spenders this winter, I think, to your point, that not every club anticipated. Yeah. Interesting. Um, Lauren Shahadi, good morning. Good morning. Hi. Before this morning. season, we felt the same way about the Cubs that we did not spending but on they, big they, time talent they, they this offseason. Yes, they got but before, before this year, right? For for a couple years. Yeah. You were in timeout, by the way, with that soundboard. Why? And those shenanigans in that last interview. <laughs> what soundboard? What do you mean? They spin the blood. <laughs> and spin JP the back. goes, yeah, yeah, they kind of do. <laughs> I couldn't tell if he thought it was serious. JP is so polite. Like oh, I could hit him with man. one of the Harold. Got that full screen ready? <laughs> and he'd say, "Good <laughs> point, Harold. Good point." Yeah, good, good question. Yeah. What you came up the with? The blood it? spinning. Get the he bacon one ready because I smell like bacon. I made it this morning and it's following me. We'll get him hey, the internet. As you can imagine, went wild with the Carlos Correa news from left to right. This is some reaction. This runs the gamut, right, of emotions. Jose Miranda and Byron Buxton beyond Everybody's thrilled. They are on the internet. They man. are on the internet, especially baseball players, as you can imagine. And Nathan Fielder, a comedian, his face says it all for many, many 
Mets fans when they heard that Correa hey, is going to do Can this. I interject one thing about oh, this gosh. Mets reaction to okay. this? I have a like, feeling they're going to do that. Well, every, everybody... Eduardo Escobar is a pretty doggone good player. Yes, he is. Indeed. Right? He had they a, didn't need him. Ah, he had they a couple hundred of, games. He had a couple wobbly months in the middle of the season. He was great in the beginning. Great. I'm very comfortable if I'm a Mets fan with Eduardo Escobar having 600 plate appearances as my starting third baseman. Very nice. Very. Point. And I think a lot of people feel that way. I hope they do. It runs the gamut, right? Yeah. As for the team in the Bronx, it is business as usual. Random Yankee sucks chance breaking out at the Bruins game. Check it out. What is up with the Florida Panthers? That was a Bruins Ducks game huh? in Anaheim. That's good. Man, I mean, what that's what amazing. is that? The Bruins may have a better shot right now beating the Yankees than the Red Sox. <laughs> They got a lot of work to do. That's one of the best lines ever. Oh my gosh, put that on the soundboard. Yeah. I was at a Dave Matthews concert in the middle of Crash in Boston, and it's Yankee Sucks chants. They're everywhere. That's hey, crazy. current Yankees. Where? When did you Why? go to a Dave Matthews concert? Years ago. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right. In Boston. Okay. <laughs> Why do you find was it a mat Was it a matinee? Because you don't stay up past 6 no, 30 late. p.m. And it had the grass where you lay on the grass and you just listen to Crash and Crush. Dave Matthews was. It. Am I right or am I right? I know. Oh, you're 20? Whenever I give, whenever I, thank you, yeah, 22, but whenever I give tidbits about my life, why are you so shocked that I, like, exist outside Studio K? Why am I so shocked? I said I had a job the other day in college. She's like, what? It wasn't a job. You said you worked at a Creole restaurant as a sous chef making the sauce. I did. Ranch. So that was interesting to me. I mean, sauce is a little bit... Much. Interesting. Oh boys. Oh boys. In Gainesville, Florida. <laughs> Current Yankees. I'm trying to get back on track. Okay. Okay. Uh, Getting ready for the season. Former Yankees making sure their skin is very hydrated. Oh you guys. Oh. You guys. Come on, Alex. Look, look, he's Alex takes care of his skin. I love, I love the smile at the end. Because he, he, he knows. He knows what he's oh, doing. 100%. Yeah, uh, That's yeah. good. Hey, the press conference guy called again, and now I am more convinced than ever that it is you calling with this message. Listen up. Hey, uh, why do you guys show those ridiculous press conferences? No, nobody wants to see those. I don't know. Come on, you guys. Get off of that stuff. Obviously, <laughs> that's from your burner phone. Say it's it. It's not. It. It's You're not. Live on but I love that our production staff put together that rip of some of our finest press <laughs> coverage stupid. moments. That's great. Honestly, on a day that we have a press conference at 11 and 12, like, the timing is iffy, Harold. Am I right or am yes. I right? I, well, I had nothing to do with that phone call. That's he came skipping in here this morning. He was like, hey, good morning. <laughs> And then all of a sudden they said, hey, we got a press conference at 11. And he went, Mwah. If there was an open bar, he said he'd be more into press conference. <laughs> that's seriously, that's my suggestion for Why? making those press because the Because it's like state-run media. No one's ever that interesting. I'm so happy to be here. I Everybody, really loved the team. Right. Their chance to win was amazing. Right. Was it? Yeah. They all say the, the same money stuff. doesn't hurt either. <laughs> you know. about the 300 million. And then the GM <laughs> presents the flowers to the wife. Really? That's what we the have wife. to do? That's my biggest pet peeve when someone says the wife. The player's wife. Ugh. Sorry. My wife or your wife. The player's wife. The, the family's coming with old ball and